Welcome to Mirpur, the city of peace and prosperity. Looks a little bit something like this. Hello viewers and welcome to the first travel vlog. Here we will be visiting and seeing the amazing sights of the city Mirpur. Well, half of it anyways. Let me tell you what I mean by half of it anyways. I went to Mirpur about three days ago and I only had one and a half day to visit some of the places that I could visit in that time. So I could not visit it fully, so that's what it means by half of it. So before I can show you the places I have visited in Mirpur and some of the amazing sites, let me give you a little bit of history about Mirpur, about the city, how it came to be, some rituals and how the people are, and then we will go on to some of the places that I have visited with the places that I want to show you, I'm going to give a little bit of history about it and then you're going to see the amazing views and the things inside it. So the city of Mirpur is the 76th largest city within Pakistan. And also it is linked with the province of AJK where I live. So, in this way, Mirpur and AJK are linked with each other. Now, Mirpur is also one of the oldest city in Pakistan, which is filled with historic places and some ruins. But, if you are looking for a little bit more history from the time of the emperors, I would recommend visiting Lahore, where almost you can see every monument and things from the emperor ages and from the way back to this day all of their palaces forts and some of their rooms and gardens are still preserved to this day but that does not leave Mirpur behind Mirpur has a history of its own first of all Mirpur is situated into two parts one is the old Mirpur city and the new Mirpur city. Now speaking about old and new, we can actually tell how the old city will be and the new city will be. But some things that I might tell you which are located how the old city is located and how the new city is located and what are the difference between the two, I don't think you have seen anything like this before or heard of anything like this before. Upon entering Mirpur, you will see two ways one leads to the new city and one leads to the old city let's talk about the old city first so if you're entering the old city forget of all the luxuries that you get usually that you would in a civilized or new city first of all the roads are unpaved and they are not metalled. Second of all, the houses are small, old-fashioned, and they are made with they are made using bricks, concrete, and mud, and they're not painted, so it looks a bit glum. Also, 
Hydro common hydro toilets are still common in that city and the phone service and Wi-Fi connection are terrible. First of all, if there is phone service, well and good, but there is no Wi-Fi. And if you can live without Wi-Fi for a few days, well and good, but if you can't, well, deal with it. With that, the old city also uses some of the olden utensils, such as clay pots, glasses, pans, and usually plates. And also their water is in a clay pot instead of being in a bottle or a dispenser. And well, the old city does have a lot of historical places as, uh, as Mirpur is one of the oldest cities. And if you go into the new city, it's the complete opposite. You have Wi-Fi, you have good phone service, the houses are made, they are made big, they are made roomy. Where I was living in a rest house, it was a little bit smaller than I would expect because there were like only two rooms. One was a bedroom and one was a sitting area and there was a washroom with all the, with all the luxuries. But the rooms were big, airy, it had good cell reception, but there was one flaw that there was no Wi-Fi. Well, I didn't mind at all because I was going to be out for almost the whole day and come back only for sleeping. But meaning the new city is a lot more advanced and a lot more better than the old city. So that is a little bit history of Mirpur. Let's go on to seeing how the people and what the culture of Mirpur is. So when you enter the city of Mirpur, you think that people will be speaking a different language but they know how to speak Urdu but meaning their accent in Urdu is a lot different than what we're used to and uh, we thought the people might be a bit moody or might be a bit rude but that's not the case actually the people are very nice hospitable and they are very cheery in their own ways we find that a little bit that they talk loud but that's their way of being cheerful. The culture of Mirpur and the festivities are all the same that are in Pakistan, but they do have, uh, but they have adopted some of the culture from the Hindu. Now, actually, Hindus have a festival that they call Holi, where they throw different colors: red, orange, brown, uh, violet, purple, whatever the colors are. And the Mirpur people city being majority of them being Muslims still use that color somehow in their festivities. I'm not sure for what, but at least they use that color in their culture. So before when Pakistan and India were a subcontinent, that's where that festivities and those culture came from and resided in Mirpur and also Mirpur also links to the Indian border and to the Indian city. That is all we need about the history of Mirpur. Now let's move on to the site that I got seeing. Let me tell you what I visited, a little bit of history and the scenic and the beautiful views of that thing, of those places. So the first thing I visited was Asifa Bhutto Park. It is a park situated just a little bit inside the new city of Mirpur and is one of the tourist top five tourist attractions. Now, what does this park consist of? It's a park that you, when you come into, you find all the carnival rides in there. You, uh, you also, uh, the boat and anything else that you can imagine that you would find in <clears throat> A carnival or carnival rides but those rides are only meant for kids there are also some rides that adults can take such as the motion ride the boat ride and maybe the ferris wheel but and also there is also another ride that you can take which is called an ATV racing adults can take that ride but most of the guys there are rides are meant for kids even if you don't want to go on any rides there is a 
vast track which you can go on for walking so it is a great so what you can do is just buy your kid a bracelet so they can go on any of the rides they want to and that that time while they go on the rides you can take your own walk and enjoy there are also stalls for tea food ice cream and there are some also some games some arcade games in there it's not a proper arcade but there are some arcade games that you can take and there's a lot of things to do in Asfa Bhutta Park. In Asfa Bhutta Park, as soon as you enter, you will find camel, a horse, and a horse buggy. That is, that they take you on either a camel ride, a horse ride, and a horse buggy ride. I did take the horse buggy ride, and then it is cheap. So let's take a look at how the park looks like. The second place I visited was called the Curry Sharif. Now curry means standing and Sharif is a word used for as a blessing. Now what is there in Curry Sharif? Uh, let me tell you it is, a, it is a tomb or a grave of one of the biggest saints in Mirpur. His grave is situated there and alongside either his wife or one of his followers are buried and outside that there is a big market which sells almost everything from pottery to clay paws to glaze to sweets to toys even clocks and some frames. So let's go inside. I'll, let's take a look at the graves and the beautiful scenery that they've done for the tomb and some calligraphy and we will also visit the market so let's see how that looks like <laughs>
finally, last but not the least, one of the main and important features of Mirpur is the Mangala Dam. Now, this is the biggest dam that I have seen so far in Pakistan. I don't know if it is the biggest one. There is another dam called Turbila Dam. I'm not sure where it's located, but that is another dam. I don't know if it's bigger than Mangla, but this is foremost the biggest dam I have seen so far. There is also a bridge that is located at Mangla Dam, which crosses from the old city to the new city, but it's not finished in the middle. It is still in progress or the people just don't want to build a bridge from the old to the new because they say they want to take boats instead. So Mangla Dam was, I could not go to the port because I had no idea where it was located, but I did get, uh, get, a, get a good scenery of the Mangla Dam and the bridge and everything around it. So here is a view of the Mangla Dam right now. Due to a short time, I could not visit the Mangla Fort, a Hindu temple which is in ruins, and another cult, another fort called the Rawakand Fort. But if I do go there again to Mirpur, I will be sure to visit those places and get a documentary on that. But that is all for me now. Hope you enjoy the first travel vlog. If you do, hit a like. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't and don't forget to comment that which was your favorite and what things I should have seen Till then take care from me. Goodbye. This is Slam signing out and as always Slam the competition <laughs>